I wanted to do this video because I was asked by uh, a couple of members on the JVC LS300 camcorder site to show them how I set up my B4 lens on the JVC. I've never done a show and tell video like this before. I'm not trying to become a YouTube personality, but I wanted to fulfill the request. This is the JVC. It's a pretty big rig. It's pretty wieldy, <laughs> wieldy setup here. It's pretty big. Um, but it works great, you know? It does exactly what I want it to do. I shoot lacrosse and I shoot other sports. I also shoot business meetings and I'll shoot events at, um, you know, like the state house and stuff. I just did the National Day of Prayer. I, I, I put a, a video of that live stream on Facebook and YouTube. Facebook's pretty small um, and it was blazing bright. It was bright day, noonday sun. I had the JVC set up and a, and a Rec 709. It turned out looking pretty good. I mean, considering I was shooting in 1280-720 and uh, you were looking at it at 640-360, I think, <laughs> when it's live streaming. But it, you know, for what it's worth, it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, I wanna go deep into it a little bit too and show you what some of these little things are. Now this box here is the Sony lens control. It's the LO-26, it's pretty old school. I think it's like one of the first ones, I don't know. It was difficult to find one that would fit these lenses from way back in the day that wasn't super expensive. It's a little wobbly, it's a little janky, but it works. And so I think you'll be able to get away with fine adjustments. Um, if you gotta do a lot of whip stuff, that, it, it'll work great for that too. And there's a remote zoom controller that goes with the LO-26 as well, LO-26. And that goes up underneath this servo, this little cap here. I'm gonna pull this off here. Um, you really can't see it very well, but um, when you look at your B4 lens, you'll, you'll be able to see that this is where your servo control goes. And if you watch the servo, will control my zoom. Let me see if I can show it to you. There you go. Works pretty good, I think. You all know how delicate it is, the connection between the lens and the body here. Uh, this is one of those B4 to, to Micro Four Thirds dummy adapters. It's got a little silver foot. You see that foot down there? And I got that foot connected to a small rig tool that I'll show you in a minute. It's a small rig tool that goes on 50 millimeter rods. But I'll show you that in just a moment. But for right now, I just want to show you this connection here that I made. Um, this dummy adapter is, it's okay, but there's a lot of play. And so you're going to need to make sure you um, ratchet this thing down once you get this small rig tool that I'm going to show you in place. I use this little old school small rig lens support. They have a newer one now. The older one has this round knob on the back that's kind of hard to turn. That round knob is what keeps this little rod here in the middle, you know, so you can adjust the height of it. For our purposes, it's actually going to keep it in place so that the lens doesn't move at all, you know, because I'm going to screw it in. And when I screw it, I want to screw it in that little silver foot that's on the bottom of the lens there. So this is going to screw right into there. So what I'm going to do is take this little Y thing off of here and reveal quarter 20 thread screw. See that? It's going to go right in there. And it's going to screw in just like this. And then I'll tighten this down. Once I, What I'll do is when I, once I get it on the camera, I'll put the, the 50 millimeter rods will go in here on both sides. And then I will adjust this the right height. This is a cheap newer quick release plate. It's like a 501 version. And that's how I slide the camera onto this plate. I slide the camera onto the plate first, and then I put the small rig uh, adapter on. Then I put the 50 millimeter rod in and push it up and provide resistance so that the lens isn't sagging in the mount. And um, that little $20 quick release plate is very helpful. And that $20 quick release plate is sitting on top of a small rig plate 
that holds my 15 millimeter rods. And what I did was I took two sets of 15 millimeter rods and I screwed them together so that I could make this super long rod assembly I have here. You can see the little connection piece right there. If you look closely enough, I'm gonna to try to see if I can slide the, yeah. And then that's attached to my power. And this is, this is a uh, Viper uh, gold mount battery. This is an Anton Bauer plate. This Anton Bauer plate, I took it and I attached it to this other little plate here with the blue handles so that can fit on my 15 millimeter rods. Now this, I don't know I'm going in all this. You guys probably already have that, all that stuff, but I just want to let, make sure you knew it. This is a high rose connection, multi-pin power focus, whatever. Everything, all the information that comes from the lens to talk to the camera goes through this. Now, my lens can't talk to the JVC, but I still do need to get power to the servo zoom. So this provides power. I'm gonna, if I can slide the camera so you can see this is going up and it goes up this way here and it goes all the way to my servo and it provides power here for this. This is my monitor, <laughs> little fuel wall monitor. It's pretty important because it's got a lot of nits, 2200 nits. I can see it in the daylight. You can't see this screen in the daylight. This screen is pretty much only useful for going through the menu and you have to kind of shield it so you can see it. <laughs> I also have one of these. It's an ICANN 3.5, like it's like a, um, it's a view, electronic viewfinder, EVF, you know? Um, this is a pretty good EVF. I use it from time to time as well, especially for doing running gun stuff. But right now, this setup is strictly for like doing a studio work or if you're like at a business meeting or some outdoor event and you're far away and you just want to control it like you would a standard, you know, hard cam setup. And so, in any case, I just want to show you guys my monitor here and how that's set up too. And what I'll do is I'll go into the menu real quick and show you how the, how you can, uh, what the variable scan mapping looks like. Variable scan mapping is a pretty cool tool, huh? It enables you to control how much of the lens is being used by the sensor or how much of the sensor is actually scanning and picking up what's coming from the lens. So if your lens isn't, doesn't have a big image circle like this one doesn't, you can crop in. If I wanted to go wider, I'd be able to go wider. And if the image circle for my lens was wider, then that would be great. But right now, if I did that, I would be shooting um, a, a giant vignette. <laughs> See how that looks? That's awful, right? So I'll go back into the menu, go back into system, record set, variable scan mapping, drop it down to HD, which will give me the pretty much just the image circle that I have here. This particular lens I have here does not have what's called a 2x extender and since it doesn't have a 2x extender i have to crop in all the way down to hd now if it had a 2x extender i would be able to turn the 2x extender on which would increase the image circle size and that would enable me to use less crop but it also it introduces um a reduction of the amount of light that goes to the lens so you cut your lens speed probably in half. <laughs> and so with that said, that means now you're shooting at a 5.6 all the time rather than you know, like a 2.8 or, or 3.5. And that's, that's a huge difference. I mean, 5.6 to 3.5 is pretty big. Um, and so, but this is, it's, this will work. And I use this because I was going to be outside in the middle of the day. I knew that I was not going to have to shoot in low light. So I even had to use ND. So it worked great. And I'll show you what that looks like when we go outside. Okay, so this is my setup here for events and you know business meetings things like that you know and the way i got it set up is in your standard hard cam setup position that way i can use it like i would any other eng news camera or event camera and it works great but you can see now like if you can get a, a lens with, with a good back focus adjustment you can get in there you can focus back there on those trees, zoom out. Look at that, I mean, look at that. Everything's in focus from there back. 
That looks pretty good. I mean, look at the clouds. The uh, JVC doesn't do a terrible job with dynamic range. It's not the best in the world, but it's good. It's good enough. It's 8-bit video. Here comes another car. Let's see if we can catch it. Uh-oh, we're losing a little bit of our light, aren't we? Yes, we are. So we need to iris up a touch. I think it does pretty good. I mean... I have seen worse images from cameras with newer lenses. Um, you know, I don't have something on this lens that you really need. I don't have a hood. <laughs> Missing a lens hood. See that? So what I have in order to fix that, or at least to to help me out is this little thing here. I think it's like a dog bowl with a hole cut in the middle. <laughs> but they sold it as a device so that you can shoot through windows and not get a reflection of you in the camera because it, you know, it, it blocks all of the image from you in the camera. What I do is I also, I'll use this. I'll put it on here and use this to help me to act as my hood. So I get it in place, pull it back where it's supposed to be. Now you got a lens hood. If the sun is coming at you, you can kind of adjust a little. It's almost like a matte box, a little mini matte box. Works out pretty good. There's mosquitoes out here now, they're killing me. So I'm gonna have to like go inside in a minute. Look at that. Killed one. For what it's worth, it does what it's supposed to do. And it enabled me to give really smooth focus and zoom action from a long distance. I was able to get, essentially this is a nine and a half millimeter wide end and a 160, I think, millimeter long end. Now the sensor on these things, Super 35 sensor, 4K resolution sensor. And when you crop it down to 1080, of course you're using less photo sites, um, but it still looks like HD. It looks like every other HD camera that's ever been. But now you get to take these old B4 lenses. This is an SD B4 lens from way back in the day, probably around the time that some of you people were born. <laughs> and you can stick it on this camera and shoot like the old ENG days. And what's great about it is you have more robust controls and the cameras are not as expensive. This camera is great and it can double as a cine camera and a ENG zoom run and gun camera. I have a plate that I can set up to, like I have an adapter, like this thing right here, it sits on another little plate. I, don't, I, don't, I can't find that plate right now, but it goes underneath the camera, I can sit on my shoulder, I can carry it and run around like an old ENG camera too if I need to. So say for instance, you wanna shoot football or something and you can shoot football with this setup. I shot lacrosse, I put it on my shoulder, ran around, shooting lacrosse with this setup. You can remote control the thing. I mean, you can go even farther than this. All you gotta do is get an extension cord. I mean, you can set this thing up anywhere. You can put it on a jib. Well, this is the epitome of what they call a hybrid camera, I think. This is the hybrid camera. I can probably keep this camera until JVC comes out with something similar in the future.